Alright, so welcome back again. It's time to start adding some, some JavaScript functionality. So if we look at our page right now, uh, if we click on the edit button, you know, nothing happens. What we really want to do is we want to show that cool column that we just made. So what we're going to do is we're going to actually go ahead and make a new file uh, and put our JavaScript into that area. So let's go ahead and um, expand this over a little. In the static area, right click and say new. Uh, it's off the screen again. I'm clicking on the word folder, so new folder. And say JS, finish. And then inside here, right click on this folder now and say new file. And it's showing up on the other side again. Still annoys me, I'm gonna click on the word file. I promise you it says file. And we're just going to name it moviequotes.js. So we've had a moviequotes.html and then a moviequotes.css. Now we've got a moviequotes.js. Uh, so this is what we want to do uh, and put our, our code in here. Just kind of as an uh, initial test, let's put something really simple. Uh, let's say hello world into the console log and add a semicolon. So our goal is just to get this console message to, to, to show up. Uh, just adding a file, of course, doesn't do anything. We have to actually go into the HTML um, and say to load that JavaScript. Um, all of our JavaScript right now is at the bottom, uh, so we may as well put this one at the uh, at the bottom as well. Because really, the, the jQuery needs to load before the bootstrap, and the bootstrap should load before our custom uh, JavaScript. That way we can use anything in Bootstrap uh, and we can use anything in J jQuery as well. So what we've got to do is we've got a little script tag here. I'll scroll it up a little on the page. And what we want to do is we just want to say hey load in slash static slash JS slash movie quotes uh, dot JavaScript, right? And so this should load uh, that JavaScript file for us. If we go click refresh on our page now, um, we will hopefully get to see that, that console.log. Now, in order to see the console, you have to right click, say inspect elements, uh, and then go to the console area. And presto, uh, there it is, hello world. So now we know that we can uh, put things into that JavaScript file and they will run. So what we want to do is we want to show that <coughs> show that class uh, edit actions or hide it. So we want to toggle that functionality. What we're going to do is we're going to show you the, the easiest way to do it uh, and then we're going to show you some like more complex structures that will be good as our apps get bigger. So the easiest way to do it is to um, use jQuery um, and use some way to access the, the button that said edit, right? So we want some way to access the, the button that said edit. Um, and so what we really need is we need an ID on it or a class or something like that. Let's go ahead and add something because I don't think it has anything yet. So we scroll up to the top and we find our edit. Uh, indeed, it, it, doesn't have, uh, it doesn't have anything on here. Let's go ahead and add an ID. And I'm going to add the ID toggle edit. Nothing sacred about that name. Uh, but it does need to be the same in your HTML and over in your JavaScript. So we're going to say, hey, look for, so dollar sign means IDs, look for IDs, toggle edit. Um, if you find one, then onto that, add a click listener. The click listener, uh, whenever it gets clicked, uh, call this function, uh, which is uh, an anonymous like callback. If, you're, if you've done much of the jQuery stuff on Codecademy, that, that won't look like gibberish. If you haven't yet, just, just follow along, right? And so whenever somebody clicks it, we want to run this function. Well, the thing that we would like to do is we would like to look for everybody uh, with the class edit actions. Uh, and so if you remember edit actions, that was it was in two places. Uh, it was on our um, cells that actually showed the two buttons. And then it was also on the, the header that said edit. So we'll look for everybody that says edit actions. We say dot here because we're looking for class. And what we want to do is we want to simply toggle the class hidden. And so uh, if it's on there, take it off. If it's not on there, put it on um, every time you click this button. And that is actually going to perform a tremendous amount of functionality. <laughs> like 
this video is going to keep going for a while, but the real the real heart of the functionality is right here. So now when I click on it, uh, that's pretty cool. Um, it, it removed that hidden class. By removing that hidden class, it showed up on the page. Uh, and then if I click it again, uh, it'll go away. So it shows up, goes away, shows up, goes away. I would like for the text here to, to change, right? So whenever I click on edit, that should put me into editing mode. Um, and then right now, I feel like the button should really say done or like done editing or something like that. Um, and then when I click on the word done, um, it goes away. Um, so we're going to add that one little feature and we're also going to add some structure for kind of best practice with JavaScript. So let's go ahead and uh, let's make our simple uh, thing much more complex. Um, so I'm going to comment that out because it's still, the concept is still important, um, but I'm going to do some, some more complex things. So what I want to do here is start by adding a namespace. Uh, the namespace that we're going to add is the rh namespace, uh, just because I'm going to be fancy. Instead of just saying rh equals uh, you know double curly braces, which is what's really going to happen, um, I'm going to say rh or this. And what that does is if if rh already exists, um, don't blow it away. Um, just use the old one, right? It turns out I know that that's not going to happen, but I, I kind of like doing that for best practice. Um, and then, so I'm going to finish typing this, and then and then we'll we'll talk more about it. So then, what we're going to do is we're going to continue the namespacing. So what what is this namespacing all about? So essentially, all your variables in JavaScript, like anywhere on this page, are all global variables. Um, all your functions are global functions. Um, so if you're gonna if your pages are going to get really big and get really complex, um, it's kind of nice to like not have a variable called like editing because there might be another variable called editing somewhere else and the two overlap and it causes disasters. So what you do is you add a namespace. Um, so you, my namespace here is RH for Rolls Holman. Um, and then for this app is MQ for movie quotes. And then all variables and functions that I make are gonna be within that namespace. Um, so if I wanted to make a variable that kept track of whether I'm currently editing or not, um, instead of calling it editing, I'm gonna call it rh.mq.editing, then that way I don't have to worry about collisions with other people. So that's one little kind of best practice thing we're going to do. Also, right now, my JavaScript is added at the very end. Um, so I know that the page is actually ready because I added my JavaScript last. Um, but sometimes I like to move that JavaScript up to the top just to kind of keep things cleaner. Um, and if you were to move it up to the top, you would need to add something like this. You'd have to say document dot ready uh, won't get called until you know as you guessed that the document is ready, and then once the document is ready, then we can can do stuff, right? Um, and so this <clears throat> is not entirely necessary because of where I've loaded the JavaScript, but if I moved it this to the top, uh, this would be this would be imperative. And so what I'm going to do here is I'm going to do some similar things to what I did before. So I'm just going to copy from my commented out section. So I'm going to say, um, hey, edit toggle, which is that button. Uh, whenever you get clicked, call this function. And so what this function is going to do, oh, now I need another closing on that, is before it just toggled a class. Um, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually look to see what the status of uh, editing is. So if editing is true, do one thing, and then if it's false, do something different. So one thing that it needs to do is it needs to change the status of the word editing, right? So if it was true, make it false, um, and then if it was false, make it true. There's a bunch of ways to do that, but I'm just going to do it like that. Other things we'd like to do is we would like to add or remove the class hidden. So before we just said toggle class because we didn't care what state we were in, we just said toggle class. <clears throat> and to be honest, you could say toggle class here and it would work, uh, but it just feels inelegant, right? So if I was editing and now I'm not editing, so if I'm not editing anymore, I wanna add the class hidden. And then if I was not editing, but now I am editing, then I wanna remove the class hidden. There's kind of a double negative going there. So if you remove the class of hidden, then you can actually do some editing, right? So that's, um, enough functionality to make it work like it did before. And then we can also do things like we can change the text on that button now. And we've got a good structure to where it's easy to, to add that. So what we can do is, uh, this is clever, instead of saying uh, 
dollar sign uh, toggle at it a second time, we can say dollar sign this because within this function callback, this is referring to the element uh, that we've already grabbed, right? So we're going to say, hey, this dot HTML uh, change to the word edit. Uh, that takes a while to really think about. So if I if I was editing and now I'm not editing anymore, say edit because that's kind of like the the normal value. Uh, and then if I am if I am editing, change it to say the word done. Uh, so that's kind of <clears throat> going to cover most of my best practice things that I was shooting for. So now if I reload the page, the only functionality I added is is changing the text on the on the link there at the top. Um, so if I click on edit, uh, you can see that it works just like it did before. Now it says the word done. And then once I'm done, I can click on it again and it'll go away. So edit pops it in and then done makes it go away. Pretty cool. So I kind of was cheating because uh, the functionality as we saw was easy, but I wanted to, to kind of show you this uh, other structure. In fact, so long as we're doing structure, um, if I kept doing this, this, this function, this ready function is going to get huge. So I'm going to do some refactoring. Uh, so I'm actually going to cut out all the stuff that was in here, and I'm going to move it into a new function. Uh, I'll call it enable buttons. So I'm going to make a new function called uh, rh.mq.enable buttons. That's going to be equal to this function that I've got on my clipboard. Bing! Um, and the only reason for this refactor is just because I don't want document.ready to, to get huge, right? I, I don't necessarily want any function to get huge, but I definitely don't want kind of my main function to get huge. I'd like for it to, it to kind of be lean. Um, and so you can get rid of the simple way that we did it to start with, uh, and we've kind of got our, our finished version. All we did was a refactor, but whenever you do a refactor, it's important to test your code again, uh, because if there's a problem, you know, you need to find out now. So now that my page is loaded, I can click on edit, uh, and, and it looks like just like it did before. Um, just in case you, you might have a problem with this, I'm going to show you kind of how to deal with problems. Uh, let's just go make a, a ridiculous uh, a ridiculous problem. So let's just say 7 equals 4, just some, some nonsense, right? Um, and if you tried to refresh the page with some, some terrible syntax error in it, uh, what's going to happen is just nothing, right? Like it's just going to do nothing. Um, and the way you figure out what's wrong is you right click, you say inspect elements, uh, you say, hey console, is there any problems? And sure enough, there's a big, there's a big problem here. This is just kind of how JavaScript works, right? There's no compiler. It's just that when you run it, um, then it tells you if there's a problem. And you can see that it's actually pretty good to you. So it says there's a problem apparently on line 21 here. So I click on it, um, and sure enough, it doesn't like this seven equals four. Uh, that was not valid anything. Um, it wasn't even a true statement. Um, and so I just got rid of that and I should be good to go again. So if I click on edit, uh, they show up. Now, of course, if you click on these buttons, uh, these don't do anything yet. We'll worry about that next time. All right. See you then. Bye. Thank you.